In this section, I will show you some of the examples and some of the useful functions and packages uh, in R. So let's start. The very important function uh, in R is called help. So whenever you are using any function or you are using any package, you can just type help and the function name and it will display all the description of that function and how to use it and uh, what is the output of that function. So in that case, uh, I am uh, trying to see the help of a function called seek and when I do help and seek, it will give me all the description of that. So this is a very useful function. Whenever you are uh, trying to use a new function, you can just uh, uh, type help and uh, look at the usage of that function. Now let's use this uh, seek function uh, in R. So seek function basically generates uh, uh, a sequence uh, of uh, elements. Uh, uh, in this example, you can see like I am calling seek using three parameters. The first one is the starting value. The second one is the ending value. And the third value shows the difference between values. So when I call seek 10, 15, 1.5, then it will generate a sequence of numbers starting from 10 to 15. And between each, between two numbers, there is a difference of 1.5. So as you can see, the output is 10, 11.5, 13, and 14.5. The third function uh, which we are discussing here uh, is called uh, read.csv and read.table. And in that case, you can uh, use uh, this function to load the files into a data frame in R. So for example, if you have an external file uh, called sample.csv and you wanted to read the data of this file into R, then you can call a function called read.csv and the file name and header equals true means you also want the header in the CSV file. So when you run this command, the output will look like this one and you can see you have the header names which is gender and height and you have all the values as a data frame. If you want to find out the dimension or the length of your data frame, you can use a function called dim or length. So in that case, let's take this example. You are reading uh, an external file called sample.csv using read.csv function in R and the data is loaded in the variable called data and when you call dim and your variable name it will give you the dimension of your data in that case I am getting two numbers 40 and 2 so the first one represents the number of rows in your data frame and the second number shows the number of columns in your data frame another function is called table and this is a very useful function uh, whenever you wanted to count the number of occurrences or frequency of elements, each element in your data, you can use table function. For example, I have a variable called color and it has uh, different uh, characters in it. For example, it has elements like blue, white, green and red. And I wanted to count how many times blue occurs in this data and how many times white appears in this data and so on. So when I call table color, then it will give me the frequency of each unique element in that data. So here I can see uh, I get blue three times, I get green one time, I will get red two times and I get white twice. There are some statistical functions you can use in R, for example, mean and median. So if I have uh, this data in a variable x, I can calculate the mean and median of x. So, so the mean of x, or you can also say the average of my data in x is 4.7 and the median uh, of data uh, which is stored in x is 5. There are other couple of statistical uh, functions called variance and standard deviation which are 
pretty much widely used in the statistics so if I have uh, a variable called x and it has these values I can call varx to find out the variance in the data and I can also use SD which is stands for standard deviation to find out the standard deviation in the data which is a very useful function in R which is used to find out the position of an element in the data for example uh, I have these numbers in my variable X and I wanted to find out the positions where 5 is present in, in my data so when I say which x equals equals 5 then it gives me all the positions where 5 exists in my data so in that case I got 4 6 and 10 so if I look at my original data I can see 5 is present at position 4 5 is present at position 6 and 5 is also present in position 10 the good thing is that you can also apply this which function uh, other than numbers you can also apply which functions in, in a string or characters of data so here if I say which color equals equals blue then it gives me all the positions of blue in my data so if I get 1 3 and 7 I can just look at my original data and I can see that blue is present at first position blue is present at third position and blue is also present at seventh position so basically which is used to search an element in your data another function is called rbind or cbind and it combines the columns and rows with each other for example I have a vector called x and it has some values and I also have another vector called y and it has its own values and if I wanted to combine these two variables uh, in the form of rows I can just say rbind x y and the output is a data frame where you can see that I have one data frame which contains two rows x and y so, in, so using this function you can basically join your data and join multiple rows to form uh, one data frame another function is called sort and as the name suggests you can sort the data in descending or ascending order in that example I have a variable called num and it has some numbers and when I say sort num then you can see it sorts the number from the smallest number to the largest number the good thing again is that you can also apply the sort function uh, in a string uh, or characters so if I have uh, a variable called colors and it has uh, several strings in it when I call sort color then it sorts my data based on alphabetical order so blue comes first then green then red and then white round is another function and uh, you can use round when you wanted to get rid of the decimal uh, numbers in your in your data so for example I have a variable a and it has some values when I call round a and I don't put anything after a then it means I just want one number and you can see that when I call round a the 2.49 converts into 2 which means then it looks at the first decimal number and if it is less than 5 then the 2.49 becomes 2 or if the first number after decimal is greater than 5 then it becomes 4 so this way it rounds up all your data into one number there might be a case where you want one decimal point in your data so you can call round function using your variable and one it means it will give you one decimal number in your data so it converts 2.49 into 2.5 because now it's looking at the second number so if you if you say round a comma one then it looks at the second number if the second number is greater than 5 then it rounds up into 2.5 similarly if you look at the second number the second digit is 5 and it says like 5 or greater than 5 
then the 3.75 becomes 3.8. In this example, since the second number is less than 5, then it becomes 1.5. And similarly, it's round up all your data to one decimal position. R norm is a function which is used to generate random samples using mean and standard deviation. So if I wanted to get 10 random samples, I can just call R norm 10, mean equals 0, and standard deviation equals 1, and I get 10 random samples within this range. If I wanted to get 5 random numbers or samples with mean equals 50 and standard deviation equals 10, then I call this function and I get 5 random samples within this range. Call sum is a function which is used to calculate the sum of your columns in the matrix. So let's suppose if I have a matrix uh, in X and the values in the X looks like this. And if I call call sums X, then it will calculate the sum based on the columns. So as you can see, my first column has the sum 6 and my second column has the sum 50. Another function is called as numeric which converts the vector list or array type into numeric. So in this example I have a variable called id and it has four characters. So if you put quotes between any number it becomes a string or character. So and I wanted to convert these strings into real numbers. So when I say type of id you can see that it gives me it says character it means the type of my id variable is character now i converted my id variable into numeric by calling as dot numeric and i saved this results in another variable called id2 and when i wanted to print id2 i would just say id2 and it gives me the numbers and when I say type of id2 now, then the output is double. It means I converted my id, which was character, into numeric and the type is double. So the double or numeric or integer all are same in some way. Apply is another function which is used to apply default functions to your variables. For example, I have a matrix uh, called mat. And... Uh, the values looks like this so when I say apply mat one sum it means I wanted the sum based on rows so the middle number is the identifier if I say one it means sum of rows and if I say two it means sum of columns so basically the middle number is the identifier of row or column so you can uh, also uh, use any kind of function other than sum you can say mat1 mean and which gives you the mean on average based on the rows and if you say mat2 mean then it will give you the mean based on columns so the, the good thing about apply is that you can also apply your customized functions uh, in it so you can uh, if you can create my function let's suppose then you can call apply mat1 my function so in that case uh, you are basically applying your function your defined function to your variable called mat hist is another function which computes and plots the histogram based on frequency count for example if I have this data called woman then if I plot the histogram then it tells me the story that there are three women whose weight is less than 120 pounds similarly there are two women in the data which have weights 145 to 50 in the data. Similarly, uh, there is only one woman whose weight is greater than 160 pounds and so on. So using histogram basically it gives you the summary of your data. Mosaic plot is very interesting plot uh, in R and here you can see that uh, mm, I have a data called Titanic and within one plot I am basically comparing many attributes in the data in this example you can see I am comparing sex with age 
and within that I am also comparing adult with child and I am also comparing male with females so you can see that mosaic plot basically tells you the complete story about your data and you can compare more than two attributes in one plot you can also use a bar plot function to create simple bar plots or stack bar plots in this example I have the data about cars so when I generate a bar plot using this data this data this uh, graph tells me the story that there are about 12 cars which have three number of gears with engine type 0 and there are only two cars which have three number of gears with engine type 1 similarly there are two cars which have four gears and have engine type 0 and there are about 10 cars which have four gears with engine type 1 another very interesting function called box plot and this box plot basically gives you description and the summary of your data so in this example uh, in this data I have uh, iris data which have three classes or categories as you can see in that box plot and this plot tells me the minimum value of this class and the maximum value of this class and also the average value of this class similarly second class it can tell me the minimum value of this class the maximum value of this class and the average value of this class so by producing this box plot you can actually describing your data and summarizing your data another very useful uh, function called plot and it produces a scattered plot between two attributes or variables a scattered plot are basically used to find out the relationship between two variables or two attributes so in that example you can see that I am looking at the relationship between the duration of eruption and the waiting time of a geyser so by looking at this data or this plot I can say that if the duration of eruption is larger then the waiting time is also larger similarly if the waiting duration of eruption is very low then the waiting time is also very low so in by looking at this scatter plot you can basically find out the relationship between two variables now look at some of the packages which are available in R the first package is called xlsx which is used to read and write the excel files so if you have the excel file or external excel file and you wanted to read that excel file in R you can just call read.xls and file name and as you can see the file is loaded into your variable called data another package is called RODBC which is used to create connection to several databases such as MySQL, Oracle, Postgres and so on so the library is called RODBC and here you are creating a connection between R and your database and here is your connection string where you provide your username and password and the second step is to run the SQL query using R so you can say select star from customer where customer is one of the table in your database and when you run this query you are getting an output where you get the rows and columns from your database so it's a very useful package where you can easily connect R to your databases and you can easily gather the data from your database into R ggplot2 is another package which is used to create several kinds of graph it is very simple to use and it can produce very complex graphs in few lines of code for example in this uh, graph I am trying to show three different types of cars which have three gears four gears and five gears and I am comparing those cars with respect to the miles per gallon and you can see that I am putting several layers in this plot to give you more information in one plot you can also uh, represent data groups and you can also represent groups by colors symbols and transparency so this is a very uh, useful and very uh, easy to use package 
Lattice is another package. Uh, it is also very powerful uh, package which is used to create complex graph in a simple way. As you can see in this example, I am plotting multiple histograms in one plot. And you can also generate a contour plots or graphs and also three dimension plots using Lattice. GGMap is another package which is used to create geographical location maps in R. So the application of this uh, package is location-based analytics, object tracking, and real-time traffic updates. So in the first figure, you can see that I am creating a Maryland geographical location map where each segment represents a zip code and the color represents the number of visitors in, that in one segment. So the lighter, num the lighter color represents less number of visitors in that area and the darker uh, color represents large number of visitors in the area. In the second example, you can actually see um, the real-time position of four people. So using GPS location data, you can actually plot the position of the objects over the map. Word Cloud is a package which is used for text visualization uh, and topic classification. For example, if you wanted to analyze any article over the internet or web, you can call Word Cloud function to find out the interesting topics within that article or the keywords which are which people are using in that article. In this graph, you can see that when I run uh, my word cloud function uh, on my text or article, I can see that most of the people are talking about Americans. They are also using a keyword called year or people or jobs and families. And in that way, I can do a topic classification on my text. And uh, I can also visualize my article in a very simple way. Another useful package is called matrix, which is used to create a sparse matrix. So a sparse matrix is used when uh, you have a lot of null values or zeros in your data. So the real world example of sparse matrix usage is the social network analysis. So if you wanted to find out the connection between 1 million people, then the connection between the people who know each other is rep is represented by one and the connection between two unknown people is represented by zero so in that case if you use a sparse matrix representation you are basically saving a lot of space in your memory in this example i am creating two matrix of the same size 50 by 50 but one is using a normal matrix and one is using a sparse matrix representation and if I look at the object size I can see that the sparse matrix is only taking 2000 bytes whereas the non sparse matrix is taking 20,000 bytes so you can see the difference between the size of these two objects E1071 is another package which contains several statistical and machine learning functions and this package is used for data analysis, machine learning and predictive modeling. So in this example, I am implementing a knife based classification algorithm and I am doing prediction on my data. Another package is called cluster which is used for cluster analysis and uh, if you look at this example, I ran my clustering algorithm called k-means on my data and in the end I found three groups, different groups and by looking at this plot you can analyze that the group 1 is very different from group 2 and group 3 whereas group 2 and group 3 have some common things between them. So this is a very good representation of your data to analyze different groups in your data. The last package of this lecture is called RPART which is uh, again the data mining and machine learning package and it is used for data analysis and in this example I am implementing a decision tree model to solve classification problem. This is the end of this section so let me know if you have any other questions.